In week 7 of the NALCS, on day 2, Clutch Gaming faced off against FlyQuest. At the start of the game, FlyQuest moved into Clutch's jungle, stealing away Lyra's blue buff. Onda's Zack then stuck around to steal Wolves as well. Moments later, Lyra paths down to his bot side jungle to find two of his camps missing. Not an optimal start. And not only did his camps get stolen, but he then pathed toward them. However, exactly six minutes after arriving at his stolen wolves, here's what we see. Lyra is up 55 to 36 CS, has a 500 gold advantage purely from farm, and is a level ahead. Lyra's perplexing advantage after a bad start prompted this moment from Shoutcaster Zyrene. Yeah, and I mean, it's crazy because like, you think about Lyra losing two camps on his side of the jungle. He went in and took two camps away, and he's actually ahead in experience over Onda. He's like, ahead in experience, and he's up 500 gold. Yeah, it's like, how does he do it? I don't understand how he does it. Now, while Zyrene is an excellent jungler himself and could likely answer this question with a bit of prodding, we figured some of the viewers might be wondering the same thing. So let's answer the question. How did Lyra do it? Now, one important thing that I want to quickly mention is that at this point, Lyra isn't technically behind yet. He actually starts his third camp well before Onda does. He will only be behind if Onda successfully defends and clears the extra camps in his jungle. With that in mind, let's keep moving. So after finding his wolves and blue gone, Lyra quickly does Gromp, then instantly recalls. Many low-level players, having had two camps stolen, would feel an urgent need to go find some camps right away, but what Lyra realizes is that there's nothing that he can do right now with low HP and no smite. In times like this, when there's almost nothing that you can accomplish on the map, heading to base is actually very efficient as it allows you to accomplish something by buying items, healing, gaining mana, etc. Now, as Lyra is finishing Gromp and heading to base, two key things happen that unlock Lyra's path back into the game. See if you can spot them. Did you catch it? Both Solo and Forbidden leave lane and place deep wards into Onda's jungle. They're able to do this because they both have priority in their lanes, and this is really what allows Lyra to make the decisions that he's about to make. At three minutes, Solo's ward spots Onda and tells Lyra exactly what to do next. He can see that Onda has 12 CS and double buffs. He knows that Onda took his blue and wolves, giving eight CS, so obviously the only camp that Onda has taken since his invade is his own red buff. Let's see Lyra's response. As you see, he instantly runs in to take the camps that he knows are up. With Vision letting him know that Onda is top, and a mid and bot lane with priority, this is extremely safe. I mean, just look at what happens here when the fly bot lane tries to interfere. Hakuho is instantly there to back him up. So this is only possible once again because his lanes are winning. So Lyra's reaction was great. His lanes got him the vision that he needed to know what was available. Then, knowing that Onda was on the other side of the map and that he had priority in his lanes, he moved in and stole back two camps. The number of camps that Onda stole from him at the start of the game, right? However, let's look at what Onda has been up to while Lyra is in his jungle. So after taking blue, Onda grabs his wolves, then takes a long roundabout path to top Tribrush, sits there for a while, then somewhat inexplicably recalls. This is what I really don't understand. Why not trade Krugs when you know that Sejuani is bottom? It's possible that he was concerned about a bot lane dive and wanted to rotate, but even if CG goes for that play, it's extremely unlikely that Onda would get there in time as he's not even recalling by the time that CG is setting up for the potential play. So at this point, Onda's brief lead is already gone. He stole two camps, then Lyra stole two back, and he did nothing about it. But where does this massive lead that Lyra accumulates come from after this? Let's take a look. So if we jump ahead to 4 minutes and 40 seconds, we see the massive problem that faces Onda. His minder camp spawns are delayed massively. While Lyra's raptors and wolves are spawning at 4 minutes and 40 seconds, 
the first miner camp in Onda's jungle won't be respawning until after 6 minutes. The first miner camp that Onda killed was his fifth camp. He took Lyra's blue, Lyra's wolves, his own red, and his own blue, then finally his wolves. The first miner camp respawning in his jungle is actually the raptor camp that Lyra himself took. And this would potentially be fine if 1. Onda hadn't thrown his lead away by not taking Lyra's krugs and wasting time on a gank that didn't work out, and 2 if all of his lanes weren't losing. If he had winning lanes, he could counteract his late jungle spawns by repeat counter jungling Lyra's camps, but that's simply not possible with this map state. Another thing that I want to quickly point out here is that both of these junglers absolutely know that both of these camps are going to be spawning around 4 minutes and 40 seconds as they were killed right after the buff. So, with that, it's an opening for Onda to finally get some counter jungling in because he knows that two camps will be spawning at the same time, and if Lyra, having just been on the bottom side helping out bottom, just comes up here and does wolves, he can run in, take raptors, and kind of push that lead a little bit and that extra knowledge that he has. However, Lyra sees this coming and after doing scuttle, paths up top, steals away the scuttle, and does his raptors first. And Onda can't really do anything about this because invading wolves is extremely risky, so naturally he would try to invade at the raptors instead. So Lyra blocks him here as well. So just watch what Onda ends up doing while Lyra takes raptors, wolves, and Gromp. He takes his own Gromp, which he honestly could have killed earlier, then just walks around aimlessly for nearly a full minute while he waits for his camps to respawn. And just like that, 24 to 40 CS. And moments later, we see the exact same idea in action, this time with the buffs. Everything in Lyra's jungle is just spawning sooner, and he's getting all of it. He quickly grabs his Krugs before taking red and running bot. At this point, FlyQuest recognizes that they need to do something about this situation, but it's too late. It's just too risky to take this fight into the level 6 Sejuani with a level 5 Zac. And beyond that, they've all been losing lanes, so they have zero wards in the Clutch Gaming Jungle. So here we are at the point where Zyrene asks, how does he do it? Well, to simplify and sum up everything that we've looked at so far, there were a couple of key moments that led to this. First, when Onda takes two camps from Lyra's jungle, that instantly means that Lyra's camps will respawn sooner. If Lyra is able to equalize, and the junglers then trade farm within their own jungles, Lyra will be ahead. Next, Lyra is able to equalize the farm score by having winning lanes that ward the FlyQuest jungle, giving him perfect information on how and when he can invade. Onda exacerbates this vision and priority problem by not taking the free Krugs and spending time on a failed gank. After that, we see the minor camp respawn timers come into effect in a big way. While Lyra takes three camps moving from raptors to wolves to Gromp, Onda is left with nothing but his Gromp, unable to invade or make proactive plays with his losing lanes. And moments later, the same thing happens with Lyra's buff spawning first, continuing to provide him with an advantage and beating Onda to level 6. So there we are. That's how Lyra, and very importantly, his winning lanes turned what could have been a terrible start into a massive lead. Thanks for watching.